Welcome to Blaze on Books Podcast, where we talk about everything erotic. I'm your host, Bernetta, and today's author interview is with Stella Eromancier Anjanaku. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm so sorry. It's taking us so long. Sorry. It's no problem at all. Welcome to Blaze on Books Podcast, and today is all about you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's nice to see you, honestly. You too. You can introduce <laughs> yourself to everyone. Oh, hi. I'm Stella Eromose Ajanku, and I'm originally from Nigeria, but I'm British, and I live in England, UK, London, specifically with my husband okay. and my two children. And I write plenty and thirsty romance novels. So that's me in a nutshell. Now, how many books do you have? Is it 33 or more now? <laughs> it's like every time I get on, I think you have a new book. I'm like, gosh, she writes all day long. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank no you so problem. much. Well, I actually stumbled across um, Longing for You. And huh, it Where did you find it? If you don't mind me asking, where did you find it? How did you find it? Amazon. Oh, yeah. on Amazon. I was actually just scrolling or whatever, and I came across. I'm like, oh, I love the color. The cover and everything was like popping. So I'm like, you know what? Let me see. I read the synopsis, and from there, I'm like, I have to buy it. <laughs> oh, you read the sample first? Yes, I did. Oh, yes. And it just, I was like, I have to purchase it. I'm like, <laughs> and then it took I me. I have to say thank you. No problem. It took me a couple of days to read it. And every time I read it, you know, I would give my husband little tidbits and I'm like, I have to tell you about this book I'm reading. Oh my goodness, that's so awesome. Let me tell you about Kiara. Let me tell you about Ryder. Don't hold <laughs> He actually was getting upset for Ryder. You know, he was like, why should you keep messing with him? <laughs> then I would tell him a little bit about it. And then we'll just, you know, I was like, well, that's the promise I got today to be continued tomorrow. He was like, hey, hey, go finish reading. <laughs> So, I mean, it was a great book. I loved it. I've been telling Thank everybody you. about it. And it's like, actually, you're on my Christmas list, girl. I'm like, look, I want these books for Christmas, but y'all know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Honestly, when I woke up and I saw your message, a couple of, I think it was last week, I was like, oh my God, this woman just made my day. And I checked and I was like, I don't even know her. So it was such a beautiful surprise. It was like Christmas came early. I'm telling you. Because it's the most controversial book, or second most controversial book I've written today. Really? So, the most, so people love it. So people either love, love it, or people hate, hate it. Because of, because of, <laughs> because of her. <laughs> because of Kiara. Yeah. I think she's so pushy. Pushy. <laughs> so, pushy. Because she's so pushy and so judgmental. But people forget that there are actually people like that. There are people like that, isn't it? That's just who she is, you see. So people can stand up, but I'm happy because when people hate her, that means my job is done. That's because right. I promise, I don't promise you that you're, you know, that you're really like going to love every character. I don't promise you that. But I promise you that you're going to have an emotional, an intensely emotional ride. So it could either be you're going to cry or you're going to want to pull off your head. You're going to laugh so much. You're going to hate so much. So I'm delivered. <laughs> It felt like I was just so vested in the entire story. I'm like, oh, let me see what's going to happen next. Oh, hold on. I can't go to bed yet. Wait, I got to finish this job, though. Oh, my goodness. Like, the next page isn't that long. I can finish it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's so good. I yeah. loved writing. You have 33 books. And how many of them actually made it to the bestsellers? I have two bestsellers. Okay. So I have Longing for You, and I have Hooked by One Coffee Girl. Okay. So, but I have 10 books that have all been number one Amazon new release. Okay. So like when I, re- when I release it, so you can be Amazon number one for a day or an hour. It's updated hourly. But I have books that stay on there for like 20 days and a month wow. for the whole month. So you can only stay on um, number one new release for a month on Amazon. That's what I found out because that's when they consider it new release, when it's it's been published for a month. But my books have stayed there. Like, for the new one stayed about 28 days. So that's a whole month. So choose me. My new release stayed there for 28 days. Yes. And it's actually on today. I found that it's number six. 
choose me number six really? on American bestseller list. Yes. Okay. I'm, well, that's my next one. That's the one I'm going to be reading next. So you can hear from me on that one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So where do you get your inspiration? Like, what makes you want to write books like this that just draws everyone in? Um, first, I am a very passionate person. And I love books. I write the kind of books I love to read. And my life is filled with passion and romance and all of that. And the inspiration I get, where do I get my inspiration? I get it from God, primarily, primarily, because I sleep and I wake up and I have these stories and these dialogues going on in my head. When people say it, maybe you think, oh, that's so cliche, but it's true. I wake up and I have all the dialogues playing in my head and I type and I just go, <laughs> because it just, it's like they're having conversations in my brain. Yeah. So that can only come from God. And the passion and the romance, that is me, because that is who I am. So a lot of my characters have a lot of me. And I love, I love women that are strong, independent, passionate. I don't like romance novels where the woman is just lame, and it allows the man to walk all over her, and she needs the man to save her all the time. Right. No. That, I, I'm not, I used to read a lot of that when I was growing up, and I wished for strong women. Women who know who they are, who are feisty, right. who have a temper, strong, you know, women who give us good and they get, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what makes me, you know, write books like that. And I love emotional tension because it makes me, it makes my heart pound. So it makes my pay, uh, pulse race, you know, so that's the kind of book that I love to write because that's the kind of book I love to read. Now, Kiara, um, like, does she remind you of someone in particular? Or are you just took a little bit of piece of you and just threw it and made her Kiara. Yes, it's true. It reminds me just a little bit of me, but I'm not crazy like that. <laughs> but I can be that. I can be that. But no, not crazy like that. But <laughs> that's just who she is. Because yeah. the truth is, as an author, you plan to write a certain character, right? But even when I start out writing, I don't know anything about these people, I'm telling you. Like, I'm writing a book now. I had gotten halfway, and I didn't even know what city they were in in the world. For example, so I just write. I go with, like I said, I go with the flow in my brain. I just go with it. I don't like giving too much talk, but it is as I write the story that their character flesh out. So they start having a lot of dimensions. They, can't, they start doing, putting themselves in situations and saying things that develops their character. So their personality comes out as I write. So okay. it's not like I set out to say she's going to be like this. She's going to be judgmental. She's going to be, um, you know, she's going to be like feisty. She's going. But people keep forgetting that Ryder put her through the ringer. I don't know why they keep having a go at her. Ryder put her through the ringer in the beginning. Yeah. Yes. It's like the only, because I think a lot of people expect that because when you are a fine guy, you're sexy and everything, you can get away with murder. No. And she's like, no. no, no, no. He's not having it. No, I'm not having it. Sorry. <laughs> but at the end, she got the man. <laughs> yeah, I bet you got the man in the end. Isn't that what we all want? <laughs> yes, yes. Now, I like the way they went to, they ended up taking their trip or whatever, their honeymoon and stuff. Yes, yes. Um, I love that. And then I also kind of correlated that a little bit with Gunner's Love TV. And I would like to say that my wedding or honeymoon vacation would have been Hawaii too. So I <laughs> <laughs> and this one, this my new book I'm writing. They're going to be mm, Hawaii in there somewhere. Okay, all right. Okay, you can leave that comment on Gunners Lover TV, please, so that at least I know I have a supporter who thinks an outdoor wedding in Hawaii would be perfect. Okay, well, definitely. Like I told my husband, we, that's the only episode that we actually got a chance to lay down and watch. But we're going to, you know, he was laughing. He was weak with everything. Even the conversation with um, the dinners, you know, like ah, we're going out yes. and everything. So yes. we did watch that too. And I was like, oh my goodness, I think it's an age thing because my niece had a birthday party not too long okay. ago. She invited like 15 of her friends and a few yes. members. Yeah. Everybody had to pay their own way. <laughs> I can't expect for these kids to pay. Exactly. <laughs> and my husband and I invite friends 
then we pay or whoever, you know, they will pay. So I, I understood exactly where you was coming from with that. Exactly. So let me say, it's an age thing. But well, here, it's in group. London, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. So I don't understand that. I Honestly, well, that's how it is. Well, we have to point that out to say, it's nice to hear what other people think and what is what are their experiences as well, you know. So please put your comments because that would be nice. We had somebody else in the US who said that they don't do that, that they don't pay. If they invite people, they don't ask people to pay. Right. So it would be nice to have your own opinion then. Okay. I both, you know, you too. For the younger generation and then yours, you know, it would okay. be nice. <laughs> Right, so, yeah. so let me show you. Let me show you longing for you anyway. Just go read us and see. Yeah, I have the Kindle version, so it is nice to see the hardcover. Is that a hardcover? Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's a paperback. That's a paperback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Just how long did it take you to write it? Sorry. How long did it take for you to write it? Uh, longing for you. I can't remember specifically. Well, maybe three months. Okay. Yeah, three months from start to finish, possibly. But honestly, I had no idea that it was going to be a bestseller. Like, I had no idea we were going to be having like a thousand uh, downloads or anything like that. No, I just saw the, the one day when the in fact the beginning of the story, it didn't come to me at the beginning. So I had been writing this story, and like halfway one day, I woke up and their conversation on page one came to me. Okay. And I just thought, wow, okay, that would be a nice start. But I thought people are going to hate it. How, how can a lady ask a guy, will you marry me? And she, I mean, the total stranger. So That's I didn't think anybody, on a Friday, so I didn't think anybody would want to read it. So I got the shock of my life when it was like, people loved it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I thought it was crazy, but okay. And I think that's what we like because it's not the norm, you know. So I think that's what attracts us to it. It's like, is she that bold? Like, hold on, we have to find out more. <laughs> and, and then I think she, uh, yeah, you are very correct. And then it kind of, it's like every woman wants to be like that. Yeah. But nobody dares to. Right, exactly. <laughs> and even with him, you know, like even with his story, it's like I felt so sorry for him, you know, like yes. that's why he's the way he was, you know. Yes. So I understood yes. him better. And I, I fell in love with him. I told my husband, I said, You are my rider. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Thank yeah. God for that. But he's God that gives me the storylines. Because where do I get it from? I don't know anyone who has that life. So it's not like I'm writing someone's story. So it just comes from God. I just have this uncanny ability to just receive. And as I receive, I just deliver. And I just pray for grace, you know. I always pray for grace that God help me to write it the way you want me to write it, the way it would glorify you, the way it would touch us. So that's why when you come to me and you say that, I'm so, so happy because it's like, yes, prayer answers. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> And Honestly, writer's friend is like everything else with their friends and everyone else was like just so typical and so normal, but their lives just stood out, you know. I yes, 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 <laughs> exactly. So, so what did you think? What did you think when she was because a lot of people had issues with her taking his key and doing that? What did you think about that? It's crazy, girl. Where she got the key from? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going out. like, what the world? And then after he didn't slam the door and stuff, I'm like, are you still going to finish cooking? Okay, let me see where this is going to go. <laughs> even my husband after that, he was like, well, did he even eat the food? I'm like, well, I assume he did because she came back weeks later, you know. Yeah, yeah. He did eat it. He did eat it. I think he had a struggle. Um, Ryder is, a, is someone who had a lot of inner conflict going on. Okay. you know, issues. I mean, he had a lot of um, abandonment issues and everything, which I didn't even realize starting out. I discovered it the way I was writing as well. So, <laughs> so in the way you are shocked, I am shocked. So when, <laughs> when, when I write and I see that the story is like building, like you're starting from um, foundation and then you're building and then you're building. You know, like when we used to be Lego when we were growing up. So it's like, I discover the character I go with the uh, uh, characters on their journey, on their mm -hmm. development, even though I write it. 
So when I'm telling my son, for example, he was like, Mama, you don't know who wrote this story. I said, I wrote it, but you don't understand. I never planned for it to be like this. I never planned for him to say this or do this, you know? Yeah. So that's why I love writing. It's like a journey of discovery for me as well. I learned lessons as well from their lives. Right. Because like God is telling me and teaching me stuff. Like when she said, there's something she said that I really like. When, she, when Kara couldn't figure out why she kept going back. Because she wanted to stop. She because did. every human being in the yeah, because he kept saying, get out. I don't need you. You don't have a life. Is your life that sad? You know, stuff like that. He was so mean. So she kept trying to figure out, why can't I just stay away from this guy? Well, she said something that was, you know, deep. She said, oh, that her mom used to say something. That um, well, we should be kind to people even when they are undeserving. Right. But that's what Christ expects. That's what Jesus Christ expects from us. That's what that's what she said, love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, she also said it that, oh, if I was down the way you are down right now, I would want somebody to pick me up. Exactly. If I don't know that I want to be picked up. So that's amazing. So that's why she kept doing it. So it was like her punching, yeah. making her do it. And well, she didn't give up on him. Sorry? She did not give up on him. I love that about she her. She didn't give up on him. And that's why she got him in the end. Right. Yeah. And that beautiful baby. Continue <laughs> 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 with their story. I hope so. Yes. Yes. yes please continue with their story. Please have a, a sequel to that. I should have a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would I call? What would I what would people want to know? I have to know what they want to know before I write a sequel. Well, I guess really would she get involved with the business because I kind of like the way you threw your undercover boss in there. But when <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I did that. <laughs> I love that program, you know. I, I watched it years ago and, and it, it resonates with me. I really, really love the concept and everything. And I yeah. thought that was really, really nice. It's true, it's true. She loved him, she loved him for him, you know. It wasn't because of the money. Even though no. he was doing all of these things for her and everything, but she still had no idea that he was the owner. He was the boss, no, you know. No, no. But she didn't care. It's like she just loved him for him. <sighs> <laughs> but, but did you hate her when she was so angry with him? Like well, when he's mocking? I know, because he didn't tell. I, I was like, oh, she's being a little mean. But I understood where she was coming from, too, because she gave so much. That's the least you Thank could you. do. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You see, you see, like I say, <laughs> but there are people who are going to argue. I love this book, but it's very because it's very divisive. Yeah. So there are people who think like us. There are people on the other side who just won't give her, you know, cut her any slack. Yeah. She said, she's giving so much. She's giving three months. She's giving everything. Yeah. And still, you hear that from her. So, but they keep saying, some people might, and um, some critics say, she doesn't give everything of herself. Well, because she didn't have to. She was too busy worrying about him. He could have gotten that from her, but, yeah. you know, she had to break that shell first. And then yeah. the whole mom situation and everything, you know, yeah. and yeah. I think the part that got me was when he actually told her about his past when he was a teenager. Oh. And I was yes. like, oh, no, not this too. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what else? Please tell me that's it. Please tell me you aired out all the laundry and that's it. <laughs> Don't give my name out. Kiara's going to catch a heart attack on here. Please do not. <laughs> you see? She was like, and again, just when I thought it was, we, you know, we had actually reached a state yeah. of equilibrium, you know, a stable base. Now this? Come on, what more? <laughs> and, you know, at first I was reading, and then I kind of, I didn't get confused, but I was trying to figure out the link between him and his best friend. Okay. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if he was abandoned or something, and then the best friend's family just took him over, or this was like an adopted brother or something, and then, as he said, they were friends since, you know, like, they were like preschool, school, yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, well then that's where the relationship come from. But I was trying to figure out bits and pieces of that too along the way as it was unraveling, you know. Yes. My yes. own way going, trying to like, okay, so what's this gonna be about? Like, I'm like, wait, you have to read it. Stop formulating opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I really like this. I'm listening. Because that's that's how I like to read my books. Okay. I like books that have suspense, you know, yes. tension, yes. and makes you want to think and assume and, and speculate, and and then you finally see, oh, okay. So I don't like predictable stuff, or I try not to write predictable stuff, and I try to give it like in small doses. So some readers find that annoying. Well, some people like me love it. <laughs> I can see you like it as well. I do. I love it. And now, what about DeAndre? Is he going to have his own book? Because we need to find DeAndre some real love. <laughs> I'm going next year. He is just so full of... I think he's been so disappointed for so yeah. long. It's so busy. I he, he, well, I don't know for him, but you can see he has a lot of attitude. He has a lot of... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. What, you, what do you think? You tell me what you think. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think he's a little cocky, too. But at the same time, I think it's his job that got that power, you know. So yes. to him, it's like, yes. I have to find someone who's good enough for me, you know, bringing the same value to the table. So he's going to have yes. to be an accountant wife or something that could, a fiance to battle with a little bit to put him in his place. But, 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 but I, I think if he gets that kind of girl, there's going to be a lot of competition. I, I can't figure him out. I don't know if he wants a girl who is strong, like Kiara, that can battle him out on the same level. Oh, he wants a yes, ma- yes, sir kind of girl. It I don't know. Work. It won't work for him. It, it won't it work for him her. because he will walk all over her. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, he walk all over her. So he needs a strong woman like you. Like, <laughs> like, I like you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like <right>. Kimura. <laughs> somebody who is going to put him in his place, you know. That's right. Somebody who is going to be able to tell him off. Because I love when Kiara said, you think I'm afraid of you, big boy? <laughs> you know, I love that. You know, yes. the first few times she, she was going into his condo, I loved it when she when she did that. I like I like sassy women. I like women who can give back. You know, I love the kind with her body. You know, like I was like, okay, normal. It's not like a you know toothpick with all of these curves. She's real. She has flaws. You know, it's like yes. okay, that's. And he's fine with that. It's like, okay, a sexy guy can't be fine with this. Everybody yes. has to be that materialistic and stuff, you know? So I love yes. that. Song. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so oh, tell much. Tell me a little bit more about, um, I think, I see you had a bachelor's degree in, was it business administration? <laughs> <laughs> I have two degrees. So I have a first degree, bachelor's in okay. microbiology, actually. So I am scientist originally okay. and I have a second degree so I have a master's degree in uh, business administration okay now yeah, how, so did that, I have an MBA. how did that become to you being a romance author <laughs> <laughs> interesting so when I was a teenager I, I love to read romance novels I used to read a lot of Mills and Bones because that's what we had then okay in Africa was in Nigeria so we used to like borrow you know you borrow from your friends so you read you buy else you read and then you swap books and everything so i don't know how many i read but that's all i read so it was either i was reading for my for my um, studies or holiday time i'm just reading romance novels because i like happily ever after okay so <clears throat> but that's when i realized that a lot of these women they are always docile always like i don't think i used to get so cross why can't you stand up to this guy? Because he has all the money in the world? Oh, he's a billionaire. So what? Yeah. I used to think that. When I, even when I was a teenager. But I never thought I would write. But I love writing. So when I was in secondary school, I used to write plays. Plays. I tried to write plays. But that was it. Then one day, I saw, when, when we came to England, when we came to London, I was, I was at a job, my science-based job. Based job. I was working at a food company. And I told my colleague, I don't know where that came from, to be honest. It's not like I have lost it or anything. It just came out of the blues. Like, I just said, oh, I would love to get published. Okay. And she said, so what's stopping you? And I said, I don't know. Because I didn't really talk about it, you know. Yeah. I just said, I don't know. And then she was like, and see what she did. Her name is Nadia. I don't know where she is now in the world. But I really owe the start of my career to her pushing me because if she had said something like why would you want to write don't bother maybe it would have taken me longer to start writing i don't know but having the right person just say something to you that helps she brought out she opened the drawer 
brought out a uh, reporter's notebook. Okay. And she gave me a pen and she gave it to me. And she said, your commute is very long because I used to do two hours to walk on, by, on the train okay. and two hours back. So I had four hours commute a day. So she said, your commute is long. Why don't you do your writing? Just write. And I said, what am I going to write? So just write everything that comes to you. So that was how I did it. So I started writing in 2010. Okay. And then I stopped working in 2010 as well. And so I had written some pages. But I didn't know how to publish it. And so one day I was going in a train and I saw a book that had been left on the train. Okay. And I picked it up. It wasn't a particularly beautiful book or anything. But I remember it was a green color. And it was thin. But I just took it and I, and I went to the back. You know, to the back like that. Yeah. And I just read it. And I read that the author is self-published. So that was the first time I ever heard of self-published. Okay. So I went home and I went to Google and I searched it out. What is self-published? Self-publishing. And so that's how I, I discovered them. Create space. A Lulu. And then eventually I read everything there was to, you know, to it. The community, I read all about it, the process and everything. And eventually I settled, settled for Create Space which is, in, you know, uh, it was a subsidiary of Amazon at the time. Okay. And so that's how I started publishing with CreateSpace. So in 2010, I published, through the grace of God, four books. Wow. Yeah, so because I wasn't, I wasn't working. Sorry? Did you self-publish all your books? So all my books are self-published, yes. <laughs> so it's nice. So it's, what I feel so good is, it's nice to have a self-published author on Amazon bestseller list. That, yeah. That's so important because I never thought it would happen because you always like see always other big authors on there, Amazon number one, Amazon number one release and all that. I never thought it would happen for me. So when it happened, I was so grateful to God because I didn't do anything. And you, I didn't do anything. You know? I didn't do anything to any. God just kind of just dropped it from my lap. And since then, it's been a wonderful ride. Roller coaster. It's been amazing. And I give glory to God. I thank God for my readers. There are people, like all the supporters, like the people who make it their business to share my books on Facebook, on social media. I don't pay them. I don't do anything. It's only recently I even started paying. Uh, I love diverse romance to like tweet my books. Okay. $20 a month. But previously, I didn't pay nothing. You know, so it was just all free. So I just want to encourage other authors who want to write that. It's possible that an indie publisher you know, a self-publisher can actually have uh, a name on Amazon. Yeah, Thank God. that's awesome. Now, um, you have any tips to let people know how maybe they can become a bestseller? <laughs> I know it's hard. And look, it's hard, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know if it's the cover or what it is, because some books, yeah. like, that should not be on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me tell you my experience. Okay, so it's like a journey. When I first started, I didn't have an editor, right? I didn't have an editor, so I just wrote. I just wrote from my heart. Okay. So that's the first tip. Just write from your heart. Don't worry about, is it good? Is it not good? Blah, blah, blah. And have thick skin. So you, because you're going to get, like, some people might not like it, some people will like it. But be very grateful when you get bad criticisms or what you consider bad criticism. It helps you grow. Because those are the people that can also, that can help you. Although, if you're not strong, it can actually destroy your confidence and you will never write again. Depends on who you are. You get. Depends on your passion. If you're just doing it, you're not sure, then well, you fall by the wayside. But if it's your passion, writing is my passion, romance is my passion. And I, for me, it's uh, my God-given passion. So there, there isn't anything that's going to say that's going to make me stop writing. Then just, let me just say that. <laughs> but yeah, then you're going to have those who support your writing, who love your writing. And there are people like you who get it. I have so many... I have people like that who get it, and it makes me so happy. But when I get like the like when I first started, I had this criticism that said, "Oh, uh, the editing is so bad. Go and get an editor." She did me a favor. The person at that time, 2010, did me a favor because then I began to pray for an ed editor. But I wasn't working. I had no money, so I couldn't afford an editor. And editors were charging so much. So another thing, yes, you get an editor. Okay. So eventually, God brought me uh, a lady called Dorothy. Okay. She's white. She is in Michigan. I never knew her. She bought my book, read it, stolen Valentine case at that time, read it, got in touch with me, and said, oh, I like your book. I like your story, but 
it has grammatical errors. I'm like, and guess what? The funniest thing was, it was that book was the first time I paid an editor to edit it. And this lady said it had grammatical errors. So I was like, I paid, I even actually paid an editor this time. So she said, don't worry, I'll do it for you for free. Okay. And then also I can read, she's an author as well. I can, you can read my book and you can give me comments and views. So we did that for six years. It was amazing because she had something I didn't have. I, I was not good in grammar, but that didn't stop me from writing. So that's one thing, another tip I want to give. Just because maybe you think you're not good in grammar or you're not good in this, or you're not good in that, it doesn't mean you can't give it a go. Give it a go. God will bring somebody who's going to help you polish it. Right. And then network too. Yes. Because if you haven't written anything, nobody can help you. So you've got to take that risk, take that leap of faith, and go for your passion. You know, do it. And eventually people are going to help you. God will bring your helpers, destiny helpers along the way. Who's going to help you, reform you, and all that, make you a better person. So she came into my life at that time um, for about six years. So she was good with grammar. She was amazing. So she helped me with the grammar. So we use the review feature on Word. So she will read it and then she will highlight what she suggests and grammars and all that. She'll give me whatever. So over, over time, I, I began to learn and to improve. But I kept releasing my books. People kept buying. You get. So, I mean, even your readers are not grammar experts. Come on. So some people might not even see it as a big deal. But one thing she told me I was good at was attention. The emotional part, the right. tension, the character, the, the character development, the humor, all those things. So I had my own viewer. And that was what she needed for me in her books. So in her books, she was good grammatically. But there isn't any chemistry going on between the characters, in my own opinion. And so she wanted my opinion. So that was how it was like a mutual, really beneficial relationship. It was awesome. So that like, happened in the just like a ordering system through, through writing. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So that's another tip. Find a writer, find an author who you admire their writing, for example, and see if they have time, maybe to read one book for you and give you their opinion. So that's another tip you can do. But a major one on readers' point of view is, what I have found out in the last 10 years, what catches the reader's eye, number one, is a cover. Yes. You just, you just told me that it popped. It did, yes. Something for you pops. And I, my daughter told me, when I did it, I just thought it was just like a normal cover. She said, Mom, that, top, that cover bangs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Because I love red. What I've realized is readers like red. And readers, my daughter told me that romance readers would love black as well. That black is sexy. It's I sexy. didn't believe her. Yes. I didn't believe her. I didn't believe her. It took me about six years to figure that out. And then I did, I believed her. And so I started trying it. So it's a lot of experimentation when you're doing creative work. So your cover is important. But let me tell you, it's not about how expensive your cover is. It's just I, 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 did, I designed this cover myself. My covers in the last, I don't know, 10 books I've designed myself okay. on canva.com. And it's free. Okay. You can also pay for Canva if you want, whatever, but I didn't pay for this. So I, I'm, at a, I'm on the free level. I use the free features. So you, when you become familiar with it, you know what you want. Because when you write your story, you are the best person to do your cover. Hey. Except you find someone who can really uh, internalize your character's story. But I don't see how they can give you a beautiful, so amazing cover if maybe they've not read the story. So it's better they read your story. If you want somebody right, to, you have to read it first. That's my advice. So try and do the cover so that at least they can uh, bring it to life. I don't know. So the cover, the cover is major with readers. So if you want to, to have them like downloading a lot of the cover. Secondly is a blog. So like the little bit here. So you've written a whole like 200 and something pages. But the hardest thing to do, even for the best authors, I heard recently that some authors Best-selling authors or authors actually uh, contract out um, writing of their blog. I never heard that before. Okay. So that's how that tells you how tough it is to write 200 words or 300 words because that's what draws in the reader the first time. Right. So re readers go for the cover when they see the cover and the title. 
So sometimes the title also matters. They cover most importantly, and then they go on the blog. When they read the blog, and it's interesting. So one thing not to do is don't give everything away in the blog. Right. I find that, that my books in the past that did that, I don't know. I don't know what it is, really. But I'm just saying a combination of things. So don't give away too much. Leave a lot of questions un unanswered. Make them want to buy the book like I did so we can figure yeah. out, hold on, let me see what's going on here. <laughs> exactly. And then chapter one and chapter two. Because when they download the free sample, like you said, mm -hmm. if it's not, if it's not uh, pulling them, if they are not exhibiting this, I want to know more, I want to know more. They're not going to come back. They're not going to buy the book. You know, so if Amazon says book inside and they read chapter one, and it's, so because some authors, they start slow in the beginning. And by the, by the end of chapter one, they've lost the reader. So the reader moves on. So but I find that uh, You hit us hard from the beginning. <laughs> I, it's something I've learned. It's yeah. something I've learned. That's what I'm sharing that. Now. So that's the tip. <laughs> Try going hard from the start. Don't wait for chapter four to hit the reader hard. The reader have, has already left you since then. So but chapter one, go in deep. So it's something I've learned. I mean, the three books, I've learned that. Yeah. I didn't learn it at the start. So but now I'm learning that. So it's something that's good. And then try and keep it, keep something, hold something back throughout the story. So that the reader wants to like find out more, find out more. Can I tell you how I became better? Like, I have no idea. So I just say God's grace and a combination of all these factors. And people who share your books, Amazon also sharing it. Like I don't pay for Amazon ads at all. Like I've never paid for Amazon ads. So well, like you said, Amazon is sharing it. I yeah. see my book on like different pages and I'm saying thank God. Because what happens? And then there are reviews. This is the book with the highest number of reviews. Okay. That's the book with the highest number of negative reviews, book with the highest number of positive reviews. So it has everything. It was number one on multiple um, genres. It was number one on Am American uh, anthology sub literature. It was number one in African literature. So I don't know. I just say, God, thank you for bringing all these readers from the East, from the West, from the North and South. <laughs> thank you, God. You know, another thing I love about the whole entire story is what? that they were, it was clean. It was sexy and it was clean. I was like, yes. she wrote this entire book, had everything in this book, and it was clean. Oh, thank After you. That, I was like, that is really a talent because, you know, it's so easy to just get all it's in this. Like, okay, I can't think of that. Let me just put this word in here. But you didn't do that at all. That was no. amazing. And then by oh, not you. doing that, you can kind of visualize it more. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because, thank you so much for that feedback. Because, like I told you, my writing is, my, is a calling. Right. So I'm not just writing to write and sell the books. You know, it's much more than that. It's touching lives. My writing is about touching lives. There's some readers have told me that you wrote it like you knew my life. This is my life. I said, but I don't know your life. It's yeah. God who's giving me this story and for the character. So the whole idea is for you to see a character. It starts out maybe at this level, faith-wise, or, you know, emotionally or the developed, or whatever you want to call it. And then you see them grow, grow, grow through love, especially love and um, compassion, sensitivity, you know, a lot of all this kindness and all that. And with God strengthening them without it being too much. So because my characters are multidimensional. So, <coughs> excuse me. So they have faith, they have family, they have work, and then they have maybe interest, and then they have I don't know, charities or whatever, you know, but it's, it's like a whole human being, just like we are. Yeah. So I want people to be able to identify with their lives, identify with them, and even when they hate them, at least you know that the people like that exist, you know, so. Like, literally, they had breakfast, they went to the club, they went to work, like you said, they had the charity, they had the, um, the, the dinners with the family, you know, yes. like literally they did every single Everything. thing people do on an everyday basis, you know? Oh, is it too long though? 
Is it too, so you love that? You At love first, it. I was like, it was, but it wasn't because I still wanted to know more. That was the exactly. problem. It's like, there's more to this. So maybe if it could have been maybe broken up into two or something, but I loved okay. it. You know, it's like okay. usually if a book was that long, and if it wasn't holding my interest, I would have put it down a long time ago. I even yes. love the whole Q and A throughout the whole, you know, like with the characters and stuff. Yes. I was like, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like actually the interview with the characters and everything, and then after that was the wedding and everything. You know, yes. where I was like, oh my goodness, this was like I love the way you had the whole thing just laid out. So oh, that, that was my first time actually seeing someone do it like that. Like I had people that put poetry in or, you know, different things like that, but never yeah. actually stick the Q&A in the middle, you know, well, not yes, yes. Like towards the end, but then yeah. finish it off with the love story, you know, and yeah. ever after. I, so I, I just have to have a part two. Yes, love, love, love. We have to have a part two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my days! Yes. Oh my little oh Carly, I don't know. <laughs> well, hey, maybe they may have a son. Who knows? Who yes. knows? Yes, yes. Maybe, maybe I, that's right. Get his act together. You, you know? know, you know. I have to. Do you know? I have to go and read it again. When you told me we we're going to do this podcast, because I want everything to be fresh oh. in my brain. Because it's like two stories back. Because I have choose me. I have oh, the yeah. new release. So that's the new release. Choose me, and then I'm writing a new book. So I was like, okay, so let me go back. And when I, wrote, when I read the end, I was like, oh, is that all they did? Was that all that they had no child really? Because some books, you need to read more of my books. Some of my books, they have like a whole life afterwards, you know? Okay. So who knows? And I don't know, maybe in future, I could do something where I bring a character, the uh, afterlife, or the, the life after, you know, the book for some of my characters and put them into one book. Yeah. Like give you updates on, on their lives. Yeah, because somebody has told me, yeah. yes, somebody, one, I remember one reader, <clears throat> she's been asking me for years to do a part two for Husband to Rent. Husband to Rent. She said it's her favorite, favorite book of all time. But she's the only one who's told me that. So yeah. I'm not going to go and write a book too because one person said it. Do you get it? So I'm thinking maybe I will do something like, um, you know, um, like I said, like what's happening now okay. in some of these major characters, like from different books. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm thinking about it. Yeah, think about it. Oh, That's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we could do, we could do, oh, we could do them. You know, we could do longing for you. Maybe the two best sellers I have, I could do. There you them. go. Yeah. So now, what would you recommend? Because I told my husband for Christmas, I want choose me. So, would you recommend <laughs> choose me, or should I go for husband for rent first? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. But yes, I'm someone told me. <laughs> okay, okay. Because all my books are my baby. I know. So making me choose is so unfair. But who knows? Okay, <laughs> don't choose me because it's also new. I don't know. And see what you think. Okay. And, <laughs> excuse me. I just want to say, <laughs> excuse me. All my stories are different. Okay. So, as long as, anyway, I love the fact that you have an open mind. So, every story is different, but there is some, um, anyway, I'm not going to tell you anything. So, just <laughs> get to me and see what you think. Okay. Because I'm trying to. That mm -hmm. one, then, That's another crazy, but one thing you, you will know is, all my car, all the girls are feisty. All the girls are strong. All the girls are independent. Okay. And the guys are hot and sexy. So, wait, was your husband like, on right that side. Tell me. Tell me, tell me. He was <laughs> like, why she keep pushing that man? That man won't be by himself. He's a Scorpio. So, you know, they tend to have these strong, you know, personalities too. So, uh -huh. and I'm cancer and I'm more like, look, we can make this work or we can have a whole war in here. So how we going to figure it out? <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, but we, we make it work. So that's a good thing. But he was actually on Ryder's side and he was like, she keep messing that man. That man just want peace and quiet. He moved over there. I'm like, you didn't even read the book. <laughs> but that's how we do it. It's like, if he read a story, I don't have to read it because he's going to tell me everything about it. Same thing. Okay. Same for him now. Even if I watch a show without him, the show can be 30 minutes. And like he said, 
He would know what they wore, where they went, everything. It would take me an hour to tell him a 30-minute show that I But he know it. By the time he finishes, she can have a whole conversation about it. He know it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. That's so nice. That sounds like my husband to be open. This is so detailed. He wants to know what's going on. He will ask you questions that you didn't think about. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, but you should have talked about that. You know, that kind of thing. So yeah. that's very cool, husband. I like that. I like that you can have a conversation with your husband and everything. And then you told me something that you said it helped you to um, rekindle your passion. Yeah. For, I like that because another reason I write is to show that marriage, because they always make you always have this feeling that marriage was kind of drab. Right. Especially sex wise. Well, that's not true. When I got married, I found out that it was a completely different thing to, than what I've heard. So I don't tell you, you know what? Let me share with the world. Let me show single people and married people that sex and marriage can be a beauty. It's a beautiful thing. And because beautiful. it's a free gift from God. We have the ring and the certification to go all out. But with wives tend to hold back. They tend to want to just stay in a safe zone. Right. Why, the, why the girls, why single people who are not married, they learn more about how to please their partner. While the wives just want to face having kids, cooking right. and cleaning, and then the men go cheating. So I said, no, I'm going to show an aspect after, you know, when they get married, that it, it can be hot, it can be sexy, it can be everything you dream about, every fantasy you can think about. So that's why I write as well. Especially the bathroom scene. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There are yeah. some of my books that when I read them, I have to find myself. When I'm when I'm writing, I have to find myself. Okay, that's all. Awesome. You know. <laughs> you know, my husband would awesome. say that too. It's like whatever we do, we can do whatever. We're married. It doesn't even matter. It's like there's <laughs> limits. You know. Exactly. Exactly. My thought exactly. And so and because. A lot of when I, I remember when I was growing up, when I read all these dramatic novels, you find out that they've done all of these things during the courtship mm. period, that there isn't really anything more to show when they get married. Exactly. So I prefer the fact that, okay, you wait, there's an anti climax coming, a build up, you know, and I'm just going to erupt like a volcano <laughs> when they get married. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So did you yeah. read a part of the book or not? Did I what? Did you want to read a part of the book? Did you? Okay, just... yes, I am. Page chapter six. I'm going straight to chapter six. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. Well, I'm going to read a page. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. How long should it be? How long should I read? Be that long. Just give them a little sample, just so they could be like, "Hold up, let me go ahead on." And... If you want to even read the the um blurb in the back, you can. You know, it's okay. up to you. Just in case they hadn't gotten a chance to take a look at it yet. Okay, let me read the blurb then. Should okay. I read the blurb? And then on page 80, maybe I'll just do half a page. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is longing for you guys, my best-selling romance. And it's a black woman, white man, sweet and steamy romance. Okay, so this is a blog. Will you marry me? Commitment shy foster parent recruiter, career right, shocks herself and others when she asks a mysterious stranger. Six foot three, well rounded block of white sexiness. She just meets to marry her. Is she out of freaking mind? But she's drawn to the dark secrets in it, in his hazel eyes. Giving up his flashy lifestyle, Ryder Blade, ocean front wall mansion owner, settles in a condo, hoping for a slice of sanity. When an intrusive, big, curvy woman with cellulite thighs and sun-loving brown skin proposes to him, he says aloud, not in a million years. Her sassy, rounded butt knows nothing about him, like the party has never dated outside his race, or that finding love and getting married are not something he wants. When Kiara shows up in his condo wrecking havoc on his mind and heart, he wants her out fast. Until he gets trapped by her allure and sees layers of Kiara no guy has ever seen. 
When Kiara discovers a secret, she takes a long walk away from him without a backward glance. Longing for her now, Ryder wants a shot at love with a woman he first turned down. Does that sound like something you, you read? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it captures the whole story. So that's the blob of the book, guys. And I just want to read a bit of chapter, uh, chapter six or page 18 because it kind of struck me when I was reading it. A lot of it strikes me, but I just thought, you know, let me just give them a little teaser. Okay, so this was a scene between um, Tiara and Ryder. Because you will break my heart, you've got nothing to give me, or Haley, or any other woman in your close life. Your heart is empty. Your mood swings drive me insane. I don't want to die before my time. Ryder's hand stiffen stiffened on top of hers for a moment before he relaxed and caressed the back of her hand with the pad of his fingers again. Coals burned up her arms. Heat scalded her cleavage and, and left her nipples raw with need. Night after night, she had longed for his touch and his bad boy kisses. Yet, standing close to him now, she trembled. Kiara Wright, you keep it real like no other woman I've ever met. You are right. My heart was empty. Not anymore. I met you, and with every visit you made to my condo, you filled my heart with hope, with new possibilities, laughter, and many other strange but great emotions. Her pulse ticked loud and fast. Was she dreaming? Kiara's heart beat very strong and out of her chest. She darted her tongue over her lip with nervous pleasure. Frankly, she had not expected him to open up to her or to be vulnerable. Slowly, she lifted her head so she could stare into his eyes. Eyes never lied. His hazel pair opened up to her for the first time. He did not try to cover up his feelings or hide behind harsh, dismissive words. Let's start over, Kriara, please. I'll treat you right, Miss Wright. I'll learn how. That's it. <laughs> I think that's the part when I was like it, it made me go back to that too whenever he said um, she said I don't want to die before my time I was like please yeah. don't give her no more news please <laughs> <laughs> you know the song that I got I was like this woman do not need a heart attack in this book please don't give her no more news <laughs> so you felt, you felt her you, you felt her anxiety. Yes, I did. Okay. I wonder about her friend, Talisha. Did you like Talisha? I did, Talisha. That reminds me of a lot of my girlfriends, too. It's like, uh -huh. look, I'm going to die, but girl, that man good. It's okay. Forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> so who was your favorite character then? I think it was Ryder. Ryder. Ryder, yeah. I like because, yeah, he made I think it's only because he made like a complete change. That was why. Yeah. And then to see that he's been through so much and yeah. he still was able to, you know, I guess pursue like a career the way he did and you know, yeah. actually become the boss. And he said he's been doing this since he was 10 years old, trying to mess around with that or whatever. I was like, yes. so that was like, you know, he had a gift. Even yes. if he had the support that he wanted, he stayed focused. Mm -hmm to accomplish his goals, you know, and I love that about him, and then turn himself, you know, like, into this man that he had inside of him, he just needed the love to help mold him. Fantastic. Oh, that's such a beautiful summary. I love that. I love because he, he so that's, that's someone who went on a really huge journey, so, like, he started at, you know, like, on zero, and yeah. then he hits 100, you know, yeah. as far as after the, his development was I loved it. I love the story so much as well. Of course, I love every story I write, but I did like his story a lot because the character kept coming. He was rich. His character was rich, you know. Yeah. They, they, was, they were there. You know, I kept coming out a bit at a time, a bit at a time. And I think he didn't understand himself as well. He didn't realize that he had overcome so much. Right. That's why maybe that's why he was so gloomy and all that. Or maybe because of the lifestyle he was living with his friend Gerard. Exactly. You know, and he got sick and tired of that. But see how God just moved him from where he was 
to where they found grace and mercy and kindness and hospitality and changes life. Sometimes it's like that for us as well, isn't it? Right, it is. So we're at this bottom, we're rock bottom, and we don't see a way out. And sometimes you just need to be uprooted from point A to point B, mm-hmm. and that can open up a new, you know, a new life and everything, new possibilities. And it's just never good to give up hope, which is what Kiara was trying to sell to him. Right. Because he, so he gave up a long time ago. Yeah. And, you know, Absolutely. is the reason why he ran. But it was a good thing because she was able to show him, you don't have to give up. I'm here to help support you and we can get through this together to create. Yes. This, you know? Yeah. You know, I said, I love Kiara and Ryder Blade, but I, I, I love the way he just kind of, you know, turned everything around. Yes. Yeah. But she was a patient one. Yeah. She was a patient one. Very patient. <laughs> so, um, so what was your favorite scene? <sighs> well, at first, I think it was the, the dinner with his mom. Oh yes, because yes, she was just so welcoming, you know, and she was so grateful that she, you know, was able to let her in just so she can have those little mini arguments, you know. Yes. And then at the yes. same time, he realized he needed her at that time. Oh, yes. they mended their relationship, and then she's grateful to her. So I love that yes. I melt my heart. Ah, it made me cry. It made me cry. Yeah. Even when I was writing it, I did cry. Yeah, and that's how I know. That's how I know it's working because that's how I know that the emotions that involved. Yeah, you know, if I cry or I feel a certain way, I laugh. Then I know, yes, it's un- because I go for emotional stuff. That's that's what my books are about. Yeah. chemistry, emotions. You know, so you're gonna go on an emotional life. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank God. To yeah. God be the glory because it's not me. I just write what I'm giving. You know, right. I'm just like a messenger. Let me put it like that. <laughs> well, I'm so looking forward to reading Choose Me and anything yes. else that you have coming out. So you say you're working on a new book right now. And what is that? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. supposed to be 24. Honestly, I was hoping I would release it this month. I wanted to release it before Thanksgiving. Okay. For your Thanksgiving. But we don't do Thanksgiving yet. But I really wanted to release it. The truth is I hadn't planned to write a story till next year. But I thought, hmm, the year, it's still a while before it ends. After I had released Choose Me, and I thought, you know, let me just write the story. So, but I thought it will, so it'll probably be early, maybe first week in December by God's grace. Okay. Maybe first week in December. So, help me look, look out for it. And I will send you the link yeah. once it comes. Yeah, sorry. The name of the book? Or not yet? Um, you want me to tell you? Well, I, it's um, only if. Um, only if you want me to put it on the blog so they can look out for it. But if not, you can keep it a secret. No, and I, wait. <laughs> should I? Because it would be nice to keep it on the blog. Well, what do you think? Because a lot of times I don't give the title of my book because I want it to be a surprise. Surprise. Let it be a surprise. Don't switch it up. But, but, but it could work. What you say? I'll just put new book coming soon. Look for it the first week of December. Okay, okay. Or oh, it could it could flip the coin. It could be the, t- the title will be there and then they look out for it. I don't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I don't give up titles. I'm the kind of author that I can decide to change. And that's another reason I don't bring on my covers any. I could be changing my covers. Up to the last minute. I, I could change my title. I could have three titles. Like, I have one book, Irresistible Fashion. I had a different title when I was writing it. Up to maybe days or a week before release, I woke up in the morning and I just got, hurrah! And I changed the title. And that book was, it was, it sold as many as this longing for you. Okay. Irresistible Fashion. It was amazing. It was crazy. It was hot. It was. Wow. So, yes. So even though it wasn't bestsellers, oh my God, it flew off the handle. But it was number one. Okay. For a whole month and everything, yeah. So I don't know. I have a title now that I think I'm going to stick with that I love. So just I tell you? We're just, don't tell me. Just in case, we're going to be like, new book coming. 
the week first of December. That's it. But just be on the lookout. Check out all of her Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and everything else. So you want to give that to you? Well, I can put it in the blog as well. But do you want to give it to them? You want to give them? Yes. Find you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You can find me on um, Amazon. I have an author page. Please click follow so you won't miss any new releases. I'm also on uh, on my blog, Fletcher and Preston Romance, blogspot.com. Um, so I'm there and everything to do with me, my book, my writing. Uh, I have a blog. That blog is for promoting uh, warmth and love in marriage. So all the tips and everything. And then also our channel. I mean, let me use this opportunity to promote uh, my, my husband and I. We have a YouTube channel called Bonus Lovers TV. So we have two segments. So we'll have the football reaction video and then we'll have the uh, let's talk about it segment. So if you want to see me and my husband doing a love thing and just chatting, just want to, you know, we keep it real on various uh, topics. Just click on Gunners Lovers TV on YouTube. Follow us, please subscribe. Subscribe, share our videos, like, our, you know, like it. That would be really nice. And I'm also on uh, Facebook as Plenty of Press to Romance Novels. So you can also give me a like there as well. I'm on Goodreads as well, so you can find all my books on Goodreads. And then I'm also on Smashwords. I have an author page on Smashwords. And I'm also on Okada Books. I'm on iBooks, Nook, Kobo, all the um, online retailers. I'm there as well. So anyway, you can just put in my name on Google and find everything. So thank you so much. I'm so, so happy that God brought you into my life because it's so amazing. Sometimes when you write and then sometimes you won't forget you're doing any good. Sometimes you oh, we actually forget <laughs> we're actually doing any good in the world. <laughs> so it's nice that, you know, you came and then you texted me. So, yeah, people can also reach me on Messenger, Facebook Messenger. And then you reach me on Facebook Messenger and you say, oh, I, I, oh hi, my girl, OMG. I was like, wow. I said, okay, that's good. <laughs> I was so happy. You have no idea how happy you made me and my family. Everybody loves you. Right? Oh. <laughs> she texted again. again. She's discussing me her family. She's discussing her husband, you know. So much. It's nice meeting you. You too. My name is Lida. Taking the time to just have a few words with me. I know it ended up being a lot longer than we expected, but it was good. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed everybody. <laughs>